What if I told you that the U.S. Air Force once had the chance to field the most advanced stealth fighter ever created, but walked away from it? What if the aircraft sitting in museums today was actually superior to the legendary F-22 Raptor in almost every measurable way? Today, we're diving into one of military aviation's greatest mysteries, the Northrop Y F-23 Black Widow II a fighter so revolutionary, so far ahead of its time, that it scared the very people who commissioned it. But here's the thing. The real reason it was rejected might not be what you think. It's 1981, and American intelligence is getting disturbing reports from the Soviet Union. New fighters like the Su-27 and MiG-29 are rolling off production lines, and they're good, really good. The Pentagon realizes that America's aging F-15 and F-16 won't cut it in the next war. So they launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, the most ambitious fighter competition in history. The requirements seem impossible. Create an aircraft that's simultaneously invisible to radar, faster than anything in the sky, and agile enough to dogfight. Oh, and it needs to cruise at supersonic speeds without afterburners something no operational fighter had ever achieved. But here's where our story takes an unexpected turn. While everyone expected a conventional evolution of existing fighters, two teams were about to propose radically different visions of air combat. And one of them would be so advanced that it would terrify the very generals who asked for it. But before we reveal what made the YF-23 so special, we need to understand something crucial about its creators. Northrop wasn't just any aircraft company. By the late 1980s, they were the undisputed masters of stealth technology. While their competitors were still figuring out basic radar-absorbing materials, Northrop was deep into developing the B-2 Spirit, a bomber so stealthy it could fly through enemy airspace like a ghost. The team assembled for the YF-23 reads like a who's who of stealth aviation. Chief Engineer Robert Sandusky had cut his teeth on classified black programs. Chief Scientist Yu Ping Lu was an aerodynamics genius who understood radar physics better than most military officers understood tactics. These weren't just engineers, they were magicians who made aircraft disappear. But here's the first secret that most people don't know. Northrop's approach to the competition was fundamentally different from their competitors. While Lockheed was trying to balance stealth with traditional fighter capabilities, Northrop made a radical decision. They would prioritize stealth above everything else. This decision would create an aircraft so advanced that even today, 30 years later, its capabilities seem almost fictional but it would also seal its fate in ways that nobody anticipated. So what exactly did this stealth-first philosophy create? The answer will shock you. When the YF-23 rolled out of Northrop's Palmdale facility, aviation experts couldn't believe what they were seeing. This wasn't just another fighter jet. It looked like something from an alien civilization. The aircraft featured a diamond-shaped wing that seemed to defy conventional aerodynamics. Instead of traditional twin vertical tails, it sported a V-tail configuration that looked more like a spacecraft than a fighter. But these weren't just aesthetic choices. Every angle, every curve, every surface was calculated to scatter radar waves away from enemy sensors. Here's the first jaw-dropping fact. The YF-23's radar cross-section was smaller than a metal marble. To put that in perspective, a typical fighter jet appears on radar screens like a small aircraft. The F-22 Raptor appears like a golf ball, but the YF-23, it was practically invisible. But the stealth capabilities were just the beginning. Remember those impossible requirements I mentioned earlier? Well, the YF-23 didn't just meet them, it absolutely crushed them. During test flights, this aircraft achieved sustained supersonic cruise at Mach 1.72 without afterburners. That's faster than most fighters can fly with afterburners. It had a range of nearly 3,000 miles, meaning it could fly from New York to Los Angeles and back without refueling. 
and its service ceiling was 65,000 feet, so high that pilots needed pressure suits similar to astronauts. But if the YF-23 was so superior, why have most people never heard of it? The answer involves a conspiracy of assumptions that would change military aviation forever. Here's where our story gets really interesting. While everyone was focused on the YF-23's obvious stealth features, the most revolutionary innovation was hidden beneath the aircraft's skin. The YF-23 featured something called S-duct air intakes, basically twisted tunnels that fed air to the engines. Now this might sound boring, but it was actually genius. These S-shaped intakes completely hid the engine fan blades from radar. Most fighters have gaps in splitter plates around their intakes that light up radar screens like Christmas trees. The YF-23 eliminated all of that. But here's the secret that even aviation experts missed at the time. These intakes weren't just about stealth. They actually improved engine performance by providing smoother, more consistent airflow. The YF-23 was getting better fuel economy and more thrust simultaneously. And then there's the thermal management system. The YF-23's exhaust was designed to mix hot engine gases with cool outside air, dramatically reducing the aircraft's heat signature. Enemy infrared sensors couldn't track what they couldn't see. But perhaps the most impressive innovation was how all these systems work together. The YF-23 wasn't just stealthy, it was designed to be undetectable across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So if this aircraft was so revolutionary, so superior in almost every way, why didn't the Air Force choose it? This is where our story takes a dark turn. By 1990, the competition had narrowed to two finalists, Northrop's YF-23 and Lockheed's YF-22. Both aircraft were revolutionary, but they represented completely different philosophies of air combat. The YF-22 was designed for dogfighting. It featured thrust vectoring nozzles that could redirect engine exhaust, allowing impossible maneuvers. It could literally hover in the air and point its nose in any direction. For traditionalist pilots and generals, it was love at first sight. The YF-23, on the other hand, was designed for a different kind of warfare. Its philosophy was simple. Get in undetected, eliminate the target, and disappear before the enemy even knows what hit them. No dogfighting required. During the flight test program, both aircraft performed flawlessly. But here's where things get interesting. While the YF-22 conducted flashy demonstrations, firing missiles, performing high-angle maneuvers, showing off for cameras. The YF-23 team took a more reserved approach. Northrop's engineers were confident that their aircraft's superior performance spoke for itself. They conducted methodical test flights, gathering data that proved the YF-23 exceeded every specification. They had the faster aircraft, the stealthier aircraft, the longer-ranged aircraft. But they had made a critical miscalculation. They were playing a technical game in what was actually a political competition. And this brings us to the most controversial part of our story. The real reason the YF-23 lost had nothing to do with its capabilities. Here's the truth that few people want to admit. The YF-23 was rejected not because it was inferior, but because it was too advanced. Think about it from the Air Force's perspective in 1991. The Soviet Union was collapsing. The Cold War was ending. Military budgets were about to be slashed dramatically. In this environment, did they really need an aircraft that was potentially decades ahead of any threat? More importantly, the YF-23's revolutionary design philosophy challenged everything the fighter pilot community believed about air combat. For generations, fighter pilots had trained for close-in dogfights, maneuvering battles where pilot skill determined the outcome. The YF-23 suggested a future 
where air combat would be decided by stealth and beyond visual range missiles, where the pilot became almost secondary to the technology. But there's an even more disturbing possibility. Some aviation historians suggest that the YF-23 was simply too capable. Its stealth characteristics were so advanced that military leaders worried about technology transfer and security risks. What if this technology fell into the wrong hands? Meanwhile, Lockheed had a proven track record managing classified stealth programs. They had successfully developed and deployed the F-117 Nighthawk without major security breaches. Northrop, despite their technical brilliance, was simultaneously struggling with cost overruns on the B-2 bomber program. The decision came down to risk management. The Air Force chose the safer option, not necessarily the better one. So what happened to the YF-23 technology? Here's where our story gets really interesting. Those revolutionary design concepts didn't disappear. They went underground. Many of the innovations pioneered by the YF-23 team have found their way into classified programs that we're only now beginning to understand. Look at the B-21 Raider bomber that Northrop is developing today. Its blended wing design, advanced thermal management, and stealth-optimized shaping all trace their lineage back to the YF-23 program. And here's something that should make your spine tingle. As we move toward sixth-generation fighters, every major design proposal looks suspiciously like the YF-23. Blended wing bodies, minimal vertical surfaces, emphasis on stealth over maneuverability. It's like the aviation community has finally caught up to where Northrop was 30 years ago. China's new J-35 fighter bears an uncanny resemblance to YF-23 design concepts. Russia's Su-75 incorporates similar stealth-shaping principles. Even European sixth-generation fighter concepts show clear YF-23 influences. It's as if the aircraft that was too advanced in 1991 has become the template for the future of air combat. Today, both YF-23 prototypes sit in museums. The Black Widow at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force and the Gray Ghost at the Western Museum of Flight. Visitors marvel at their otherworldly appearance, not realizing they're looking at aircraft that might have changed the entire course of military aviation. But here's the final twist to our story. Some aviation insiders believe that Northrop never really gave up on the YF-23. They suggest that somewhere in classified hangars, evolved versions of this design continue to fly under black program designations. The YF-23 may have lost the competition, but it might have won the war for the future of stealth aviation. What do you think? Was the Air Force right to choose the F-22, or did they make the biggest mistake in military aviation history? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more deep dives into the aircraft that changed everything, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Because in the world of military aviation, the most interesting stories are often the ones they don't want you to know.